Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and here we are back for our weekly nursery tour and we are here in the production greenhouse. This greenhouse is the one that we built this late winter and have been using to the fullest of its potential this growing season. We have been here many, many times. You've watched us build this from the ground up. We have shown you some pictures of it just being filled with plants. So we thought it would be fun to kind of come back up here, show you the annuals and all the hanging baskets that you have seen us pot up. We're going to go through and check on my touch and die section, um, some of the shrubs, just a general kind of a nursery tour that even if you come to the nursery that you're not privy to see because the production area of the nursery is not open to the public. So this is kind of a little sneak peek behind the scenes action here at Creekside Nursery. Now, you may notice behind me that there are some empty gaps and spaces. That is because, one, we have been shipping plants to all of you sweet folks who ordered online, and the nursery business itself here at our location has been absolutely booming. We've only just hit our last frost date yesterday, but we have had just a massive season so far selling you all of these great plants. So that's where the holes are. When this greenhouse was at capacity before we really started selling anything, there was just a little, like a two foot path um, where Jerry is and then on the other side. So anything that you see is gravel, those are plants that have already been gone. Now we do have a ladder in here because um, some, of us, some of us vertically challenged folks have a hard time reaching the hanging baskets. So we have to have the um, ladder in here to really be able to access them. And you can see that they are growing quite happily. Remember, I don't know when that was, January, February, where we did the video where we showed you how we pot up hanging baskets and you got to see us um, pot up these cocoa liner hanging baskets, which, which I guess is over here, um, they're massive. And again, any little hole that you see or a dripper that's hanging down, that is a hanging basket that has already been pulled, um, either is sold or is down at the nursery waiting to go home with people. So when we say that we grow big baskets, we grow big baskets. Again, this is only the middle of April. Traditionally, our big hanging basket season is around Mother's Day. Hopefully we will still have some by Mother's Day, but if we do, they'll be nice and big. So down here, um, Jerry, just kind of pan, like look at this coleus, absolutely gorgeous coleus has been flying out of here, super popular. We um, love it for all the wonderful reasons. It's just great. So this is kind of like coleus row right here. So we'll just go through um, and, and show you all of the things, not all of the things, but just to give you kind of an overview of the greenhouse. Jerry has gotten the irrigation um, hooked up in here. So basically he ran, what would this be, one inch? It's a half. half inch PVC pipe, um, two rows, and then these are, lack of a better word, whirly gigs that mini wobbler mini wobbler is the technical term it's half inch pipe to three down to the three quarter lead line so a half inch pipe down to the three quarter lead line for all you technical folks out there jenny clearly is not the technical person when it comes to the irrigation the plumbing the electrical um so i'll just call it a whirly gig and what it does is it simulates obviously rain so it doesn't shoot out of the top it shoots out here and so it shoots out so it doesn't go up all the hanging baskets the the white like cords that you see hanging those are the drippers for the hanging baskets so the mini wobbler as jerry said is the rainfall that shoots out so this will cover um both to that side in both ways and it simulates the rain and it does great and they are very very happy um this is the um, Rockapuco section, the double impatience for the shade, fantastic shade annual. This is just the big, I'll let you see, this is Coral Sun. Coral Sun has that massive big bloom on it. Wisteria, 
Um, Jerry's going to try to zoom in on that, give it time to get nice and focused. Wisteria is the purple um, to your left, and Coral Sun is that hot corally pink to your right. They're all just such magnificent um, shade annuals, gorgeous color, do really well, but they truly are a shade annual. They can handle just a little bit of morning sun, but certainly in our hot southern climate, they do not like afternoon sun at all. And that is apple blossom, which is a nice, pretty pale pink, just a beautiful, I love these plants. And then back there that he's getting ready to show you, that is purple. So the purple is a nice, deep magenta color. Um, and you can just see, if you remember when we were potting up these plants, that they were just little babies and they are growing and are quite happy um, living their best life here at Creekside and ready to go home with you folks um, really soon. So, you know, we did this whole greenhouse. So Jerry got this installed. This is kind of the control center. So I want you, he's gonna pan over because on this side, I'm trying to move slow here, on this side, remember we had the automated sides on this greenhouse. You can see through to the next greenhouse right beside of us. Those are manual sides that we have to roll up and roll down. But with this greenhouse, we can flip a switch and eventually we'll get, eventually, we'll get it hooked up with the um, thermostat but it lowers so you right now we just flip a switch and they both sides will automatically lower down they um, stop automatically and then we of course when you're ready to open it you can just flip it to open and it will open automatically so we just leave it at that now you can see the motor going up and down really easy really fun So that just kind of does its little thing and moves along. Remember you saw us install this? That was a lot of fun. This was the first side, so it took a little bit of getting used to the mechanics, but it works quite nicely. So there you go. And we can just leave it and it is fine. Now, this is Jenny's touch and die section that we have affectionately named it. Clearly it has moved outside now because these are all perennials that our sweet friends at Walters Gardens sent us to trial this growing season. So these plants will be introduced um, next year um, and are available. So they sent it to me these plants so that I can see how they do in our um, southern climate. Jerry's wobbling there. Um, so some of them are doing really great. The hostas, when they came to me, were, were small. They were on the small side. Um, and honestly, I thought maybe I was going to lose them. But when we brought them outside, they really have perked up. So I, at this moment, I don't know all the names for them because it was a bit of a jumbled mess. This reminds me very much of Wiggles and Squiggles. It's going to be a new, different one. So the hostas are doing well. Um, but then we've got a daylily. We've got like six different types of monardas. The monardas, of course, are wonderful perennials that love the sun, love um, just great, look at that sedum that Jerry is showing you. But there's a couple of them. Um, this is a new, I'm gonna put this on the ground so that Jerry can focus on it. This is a new um, Spigelia Ragin Cajun just a beautiful nice intense pink bloom not pink that's red red bloom on it and then look i'm gonna put this on the ground that makes it easier for jerry to focus so that i'm not shaking it this is a new baptiza this is let me make sure i get it right honey roasted look at that so it's that yellow and then actually some brown in there um, whether it's a deep purple but it looks brown so you've got that yellow and brown together we love the baptizas. Great, great sun perennial, early spring bloomer, just as wonderful. So then there was a Veronica. Like I said, there was multiple um, Menardas that are going to be introduced. Sedums, lots of different sedums. Um, and then over here, you can come over here. These are 
Um, look at this. This is fun. This is marshmallow. This is a new introduction with the amazing daisies. And this is marshmallow. You got the tag? I'll let Jerry focus on the tag and then we'll flip. You know, if you've never filmed cam uh, videos before, it can be a little bit challenging. So here we go. I'm going to tilt it so that you can see that really fun double frilly bloom on this great new Shasta Daisy. It's really fun. Really, really fun. So it is blooming. It is the first one to be blooming, um, but there are two other um, Shasta Daisies that they sent me. One is the Improved Banana Cream, and then the other is the Spun Silk, which is going to be really fun. I mean, look at these plants though. Look how nice and thick that plant is. It is clearly a very happy plant. That is one of the main reasons that we love Walters is because they don't send you wimpy plants. They don't send you bad rootstock. They send you gorgeous, healthy perennials, great root systems. And then I cannot wait for this one to bloom. It's gonna be really fun. Talking about the patio with those white and light color themes. I have a feeling some of these daisies are gonna end up back there. So it's gonna be really fun. And then look at my bubble gums. <laughs> Remember how we talked about that last year, Jerry sold all my petunias out from underneath me because it was just a crazy season? Well, not this year. So the bubble gums are doing great. They clearly need to be put into the ground um, yesterday. So we will make that happen as soon as we can. Um, so, yeah it's just a little crazy around here but look at this now you look at this foliage and it's just a really neat foliage on it i just find it really interesting unique i don't see a lot of plants with this type of foliage on it and then you can see at the top it's already got some flower buds forming well this is a new phlox from proven winners this is called opening act romance I'll let you see the tag and you can go ahead if you want some more information about this any of these plants you can go to walters gardens website waltersgardens.com put the name in and they'll give you all sorts of great pictures um, all the information great companion plants and so forth and so on so that's a great one and then they're adding to their flocks series their um, luminary series with the um, backlight. So backlight is going to be really fun. I imagine that this too will end up in the patio area. So if you're familiar with the ultraviolet or the um, opalescence, this is going to be part of that series as well. Just a really fun plant. Can't wait to see how it does, how it performs, what it looks like, what it smells like, all sorts of good things. All the senses, all the senses. So there we go for that. Look at these two sedums though. This is some fun stuff right here. Such fantastic foliage. These are two different ones. I'll show you the tags in just a second. But these are going to be tall perennial sedums. Really neat, gorgeous texture, gorgeous color. Beautiful. So let me put this one down. All right, I'm going to move for a second. So I guess you saw that. So this is the Rock and Grow Back in Black. There we go. This will be a perennial in zones. I'm reading upside down. Three to nine. So extremely versatile. It's going to be about 20 to 24 inches tall. Spacing, your, your minimum spacing is going to be 26 inches. So this is going to get nice and wide and it will bloom in the fall. So that's a fantastic thing about these um, sedums is a lot of times they are fall bloomers. So when everything else in the garden is kind of looking a little sad, these guys jump in there and are really starting to shine. Then the one that's a little bit more of the green, this is the Coral Jade, still of that Rock and Glow series. Again, it is Hardy and Stones three to nine. It's going to be a little bit taller. It's going to be 28 inches tall and a little wider. So it's going to be a bigger plant overall. So you need to give it some room to groove. 
You can pair this with some perennial grasses, um, butterfly bush, lavender, cat mint, this some echinacea, Russian sage. So lots of sun, lots of kind of like more of a dry conditions that these will grow in. Obviously they're sedums. So they like it warmer and drier. So there we go for that. Um, I kind of, I think we hit everything in the touch and die section. So we're just going to kind of walk through, let's go on this side, that the hose is there. So it's a little crowded. Um, but where we have some really like the snow drifts over here are just growing and loving life. We have over on this side, the new ones that have been more recently potted up. So you can see we've got some verbena here. We've got some salvias. We've got a big difference here in the impatience, much smaller. We do love those Rockapuco impatience, but we have found as a grower, if you don't give them room to spread out and let the sun get down on top of them, then they tend to go straight up towards the sun. Um, we don't use growth regulators on our plants. So hence, sometimes we have to challenge ourselves to control it with water and fertilizer and growing conditions, but they will be absolutely gorgeous. This is kind of like the petunia flower greenhouse. This is just kind of where they all ended up back here. Um, let's see. I want Jerry, I'm going to tiptoe if you don't mind. I kind of keep Jerry on his toes over here when I'm moving and grooving. First of all, since I'm going this way, let me show you raspberry rush. There's the tag. I know how much you love to see your tags. So this is an annual, it is a petunia. Oh, focus, sorry. Sometimes it's not even Jerry. Yeah, sometimes it's a camera and sometimes Jenny moves too fast. So if you're just patient just for a second, it'll focus. But look at that great, beautiful color. Really, really vibrant. Um, just a fun, playful color, raspberry rush because it is a petunia. It'll do great in the landscape, containers, so forth and so on. But what I wanted to show you that I'm making my way towards, and I know that y'all joked with us about how, you know, how you can get the plants in the middle and you have to tiptoe. Well, now that we have some room, I can tiptoe. I'm going to come back. Jerry, I'll come back to you. Oh, he found a path. Okay, so let me show you. Um, this is a super bell. This is Morning Star. Remember, super bells are very, very similar to petunias. It's a super bell is the um, trademark name for their calibracoa. Million bells, maybe you know them as. The super bells do great um, in containers, hanging basket, window boxes, those things. They do not like to have wet feet, so they do not do well in the ground, typically. We recommend that you not put them in the ground. This is one that I'm going to use a bunch of in the back patio, both in my unique stone urns and the flower boxes on the deck. So I have big plans for this morning star. I'm going to use it a lot mixed in with other pinks and whites. In my mind, it's gorgeous. So hopefully it will translate that it will be just as equally as gorgeous in real life. Time will tell <clears throat> and soon we shall find out. Um, Here's a hanging basket that I want to show you. This is dreamsicle. No, nope. tropical sun. Y'all, it's late. <laughs> it's Friday night about, I don't know, what is it, 7 o'clock? And we've had a great day at the nursery, so Jenny's brain's a little tired. This is tropical sun. What is this? Tropical sunrise? Oh, lol, y'all. I need to go eat. <laughs> Days at the nursery is open. It's a wonderful... how would you describe it? It's wonderful because you get to meet all these people, but you're constantly like answering questions and helping people, which we love to do, not complaining. But by the end of the day, like my brain is like, Mark, it is, I don't even know my own name half the time. Tropical Sunrise is a beautiful caliber koa, makes a gorgeous, stunning hanging basket. And of course, my little trick, you know, if you don't want it as a hanging basket, you can just take it out of the hanging basket and plop it into a container and it will give you this massive, gorgeous container for the entire season. It does great. Um, <clears throat> the strawberries are coming along quite nicely. They are very happy. These all have been sold for 
online. So what we have here are all for our online orders. We were able to secure, what, three trays, Jerry? We were able to get two, three trays of strawberries. All of them are red, red strawberries that will be available for sale at the nursery. So my folks who are local or are coming to the nursery, just know that we have um, more strawberries. They are growing. Jerry potted them up this week, so they're still babies. If you really, really want to take them home, you can take them home. Just know that they are small. They're not a nice size right now. Also, we got more coffee cups in. So Jerry potted some of those up, and we have two more trays to pot up. So the, the original order of coffee cups is almost gone. I think we have like two trays left right now. But it will, um, like I said, Jerry's already potted some up. So know that for you folks who are coming for coffee cups, we have more coming and growing. And as long as you don't mind, you know, knowing that you've got a freshly planted coffee cup and it can grow, then you are doing well. Look what's hiding right here. You see that, Jerry? It's a strawberry. So remember the big deal about these um, buried treasure strawberries is that they are ever bearing. So ever bearing means that they continue to produce fruit all season long. I know here in North Carolina, we are on knocking on the door for our strawberry season to begin. That means that we will have delicious fresh strawberries from our local strawberry farm. They do a magnificent job. Um, but those are going to be like a seasonal. They'll produce for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, and then they're done. They're the nice, big, huge strawberries. These are different. They're everbearing. They continue to produce fruit, um, and their fruit will typically be a little bit smaller, especially the first year. In subsequent years, they do get bigger, but that's really fun. And then this is the pink. So you can see that they have pink and white is new this year. So obviously we have the red and we have the pink. White's on the other side. We won't climb over there, but it's just a white bloom. So it does really well. And then I do want to show you real quick, we're gonna go out here to the shrub lot um, because, gosh, it was almost a year ago. Well, we're getting close to a year um, where we did the video when we got all of the um, shrub liners from spring meadow nursery they're also in michigan and so we showed you that whole process of what it's like to pot up the shrubs so this is kind of the proven winners alley right here but i want to show you is these beautiful azaleas that are in bloom so we've got pinks and purples and reds but just I mean, look at that color. Is that not just magnificent? Um, the plants themselves are still a little bit on the small side. Remember when we got these, they were only a quart size. So this particular one that Jerry is showing you is Perfecto Mundo Double Purple. Let me show you your tag. Remember, you can go to provenwinners.com to get all the information. Just keep in mind, these kinds of videos are completely unedited. So we don't have graphics popping up. So I will tell you that it's going to be hardy in zones 6B to 9, sun to part shade. This particular one is two and a half feet to three feet tall, but three feet wide. And it will bloom in spring and then summer to fall. So it's just the blooms when we come up here, when we drive up here, they're just so cheery. I mean, they're just happy. The um, reddish color is technically hot pink. Then we come down here. Um, let's see if I can show it to you. Now, this is the Bloomathon red. Let me get it for you. Now, what was it two weeks ago, Jerry? We had um, two nights of like, one was like a 28 degree night, one was a 29, something like that. So we did have a freeze. So if you see any little brown crispies on there, that is just where that was that tender new foliage that got zapped by those cold nights. But clearly it still bloomed. So these have sat outside almost for a year here at Creekside. Great, hardy, beautiful azaleas. So this is the red. Then we have, 
Look at this sweet, this is not the technical term, baby doll pink. This is double pink. You want to talk about like that sweet, beautiful, soft pink. Just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. So like for me, this would be a possibility maybe that I want to put on my back patio because again, I'm going with those cool light colors. This might be a great option for me to put back there because it is um, just such, such a beautiful light color. And then did we already show this one? The double purple. Did we do double purple? I think we did that up there. Anyway, so these are all coming along gorgeous. Um, there's a lot more of the PW shrubs that will come through as the season goes on. Lots of different options. As these are ready, we're bringing them down to the nursery. Um, right now, we just simply, we can't keep the plants on the table because people are just grabbing them up, which is a wonderful thing, but there is a massive demand for these beautiful plants and we are doing our absolute best to get them to you. My folks who have ordered online, when I tell you that we are working our honeys off to get these plants to you, I am not exaggerating. We are doing everything that we possibly can to get your plants, your orders to you in the absolute fastest, safest way possible. Um, for some of you, maybe this is the first time you've ever ordered plants to be shipped to you. So this is a new experience. So you've got to keep in mind for us shipping them to you that these are live plants. It's not like you order a shirt or a sweater from somebody and they can just slap it in a bag and just send it to you and it's no big deal. So these are live plants that we, I promise, we take as we have done everything that we know of to take great care of these plants so they can get to you in a beautiful manner. Now, what does Jenny always say? It's not gardening till you get dirty. Guess what? Your plants, when they arrive to you, have just survived the UPS gymnastics. Like that is, they have been tossed, flipped, flung, slung, everything possible. So guess what? They're going to get to you and they're going to be a little dirty. It's all right. If it has a little bit of dirt on it, no big deal. Just brush it off, give them a good drink of water, take care of them, and they'll be fine. Now, sometimes, yes, plants are damaged in shipping. That happens to us on a routine basis. Just know that we are doing everything that we possibly can to get them to you safely. So if there is an issue, you need to contact us and let us know um, that we, these are tough, tough plants. So just know that, that we have selected these plants because they are tough, they are durable, and most of these plants, when they come to you, it's, we've pre-pinched them so they get nice and bushy. So if you have a petunia that has a little broken twig, stem off of it, it's okay. It just means it's going to get nice and thick and full and will be great in the long run. So just remember, a little dirt never hurt. It's all right. Um, thank you, as always, for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.